Hello guys, welcome to Solving Solutions on the Brown channel where you get solutions to all your solving problems. It's nice having you in class again today. How have you been? On today's video, we are going to show you something quite interesting. So lately, we have been able to move our contour as a shape file to GIS. And before moving it to GIS, let's say uh, QGIS, we were able to add some annotations to it. So we are going to share them with you. So the first thing is that let's um, actually get a contour file. Let's say let's get a contour now. So we go to grid and then we browse. Good. So we've added what the XYZ data, but let's now view the data to see. Now the B is for X, C is for Y, then D is for Z, right? Good. So we need to do that um, appropriately somewhere around here, right? Good. Then we can just, um, since we are using Kriegin and every other thing is default, we can just um, finish. Good. We might decide to save what the report. And then we close this up right now we have what the contour from that's what xyz data now there are some interesting things we saw remember we have what the grids here the grids on the north and then the grids on the east right good now we realize that we can actually populate this top we can populate the right we can add what the suffix of north and east and then we can actually export the whole of this contour what as a shape file to maybe um, adjust or QGIS or any other JS package and then still what have a few annotations on it. So let's now see how it goes. Remember that um, on your table of contents here, you have the right axis, the left axis, the top, the bottom, and then you have the contour right good. Now the contour itself represents the contour you have been, you've been seeing there. Then the, um, the bottom axis represents this part and then the right and then the top and then the left also represents all of these other parts um, respectively so if you double click on any of them you can have the properties of each of those axes and then you can appropriately maybe do some modifications on it now we've clicked on the right right good now let's look at what we can do on the right now on the right let's look at the tick the tick is actually outside right good so on the default location you might see it as none right good because there are no ticks most of the times but now when the tick is outside as it has been now you can add your labels to it so let's say we want to show our labels and then the labels have been shown now most times the labels i don't like them to be shown this way i like them to be shown as maybe that vertically ascending or something so i can decide to change this to 180 enter so you now see that what it has been rotated at um, 180 degrees and then it's now like vertical right good then we can also do some things we can also look at the font properties let's uh, make this um times new roman and then let's um add what a suffix now a suffix is actually either the meters thing or the meters nothing that we are having so this is actually what not so we just use the space bar and then we type n then we hit enter so you now see what nothing has been what attached to each of those what grid values right good so we can do similar thing for all of them if we make it bold it might not be very good but you can still make it bold or maybe you can still what italize it or whatever the case is so these are some modifications you can do with that now pay attention to what the value of the intervals under scaling because we are going to need that on what on QGIS right good now you click on scaling and then you see the intervals you see the axis minimum the axis maximum and then you now see the interval of what those are grid lines now I haven't done that every other thing for now is set as default the grid lines we don't need them however if you need them you can still put them out we are going to show those grid lines when we get to GIS now we are done with what the right we can do similar thing for the left now the left the grid lines they are not showing we don't need them however we need labels the labels are showing however they are showing at what an angle of um, 270 so we still need them vertical so we change that to 180 right good then the next thing is that um we need to look at what the suffix and then we need to add n to it that's to show that it's actually what the northern coordinates right good then the northern grid values we can decide to change what 
the font to Times New Roman again. It has been changed, right? But now let's look at the top and the bottom. Again, you can go to scaling to see what's the interval of 500 meters. Now we can do same thing for the top, which is somewhere around here. We still come down to labels. We show the labels because the ticks is already out. Then you now see that at this point, it's actually on zero because that is what's like the horizontal plane. We don't want it at any angle. Right, good. So we leave it at zero there. Then we now change the font to something like um, Times New Roman, which we have been doing. And then we add what a suffix of what Easting. Right, good. Then we have something like this. Right, good. So we can do similar thing. Okay, the font has been changed. We can do similar thing for the bottom now the bottom axis so we still come down to labels the labels are showing the angle is at what zero so if we change this angle let's just try something if we change this angle to 180 you see now it has been turned upside down the orientation has been turned upside down right good so it's best we leave it at zero because that actually defines what the horizontal plane now see that it has been rotated back then we also add what the unit, which is the suffix for this particular axis, right? Good. Then the, the font should be times new Roman, right? Good. So we've actually done most of the editing that we want to do on what? On, um, sofa, because we want to now export this, um, our contour map as a shape file to what to gis maybe qgis so i haven't fixed all of these the next thing is for us to see how we can put off what the the contour intervals the labels of those contour intervals right good so now let's come down to levels now we can see the contour interval is 10 let's um, reduce it to 5 so that we can have a more populated contour there then we can now put off the labels good we can put up the labels because if we leave the labels on and then when we move it to gis those um, points where the labels have been displayed those part of the lines where the labels have been displayed would give us some issues right good so we are going to leave those parts out for now so let's just um good we are going to leave those parts out for now remember you can play with it maybe you can feel it maybe if you feel it you can actually change the color to something more appealing and the rest of that but that's not what we want to do for now all we want to do is that we want to just export this our contour as a shape file towards to to qgis so basically we've done most of the annotations we need we have our grid values we have what's them in the right orientation we have the the suffixes attached to them and then we've turned off the what the labels right good so now we now come down to export right good you can either use this export here shortcut control e or you come down to file and then you go to what you go to export right so we are working on that folder there so let's call this um, contours and then remember the file type that we have selected we have actually selected what shp which is what um, s3 shape file then you, you need to unselect them, um, selected objects only, and then unselect this. Just leave only this in one selection. Then we click on save. The prompt for the export option is out. So we just um, leave it as default as it is. Okay. And then we'll eventually find out that our contour has been exported as, as what a shape file. Good. So we are now on QJS. Let's go to layer, add layer, add a um, vector layer. And then we can browse good so we are on the folder let's now see these to only s3 shape files now we can see contours and then contours pulley right good so we are going to bring in um, these two um, contours one is the lines then the other one is some of those um, annotations that we have on the on the lines right good so we just open the both of them we add and then we close all right good now the crs is not set so we just um, set the crs the coordinates we are actually from um wgs 4 utm zone 32 similar thing for the line so we just move the both of them there then we can now zoom the both layers to 
zoom the both layers to layer right good now we have our contours here remember that let's come back to sofa remember that on sofa when we double click on this our contour and then we come down to level sorry info good we come down to info we are going to see attributes more like um, you know an attribute table or something now what is that the file we see under this attribute is what the z level now this z level is actually very important when we now get to what to gis which i'm going to show to you now so on our qgis we've seen what the contours being um being displayed we can actually um, put on a base map let's use um let's use a um, quick OSM so that um, yeah open street map rather let's use an open street map good so now this location is actually the location where the data was what was picked so we can just put that off because we've confirmed that now let's open the attribute table of these contours you now see that z level you saw on so far right good now these are what the the contour values yeah these are the labels that you've seen there on so far right good so these are the contour values you've seen on so far now some of these lines that are null are lines that maybe show those um grids and all of those ticks that um, are on what on our on our contour map right good now the next thing is for us to label with um let's come down to properties then we go to labels so we're actually on that labels we come down to single label and then we change this to let's say comic sand we make it a bit bold sorry bold and italized then let me reduce the font to about seven right good then i come down to placement i want it to be placed on the line just like we used to have with contour labels on the line right good so i want it to be placed on the line then i also want to attach the meters as the unit right good so when the the values have been displayed i also want to show the meters so on them um, qgis if you want to add them um, let's say concatenate you use this um is it double bar or something then you know meter is actually a, a string so it needs to be in a bracket and i need a space before the m because i don't want the meter to be attached to the value so i just keep a space before the m so you now see the preview here so we'll now be having something like 265 space meter right good so i'm going to use that to what but we are just giving you an hint of maybe how you can achieve similar stuff so let's change this to a round figure of let's say 18,000 so that the good it's been zoomed out a bit now we want to show you these grid values that these grid values are actually interesting so now let's come down to grid let's add one and then let's modify the grid right good now under the modification let's say we need them um, solid we are going to change that then the crs let's use the the crs of the data that we are working with which is what wgs 84 etm zone 32 and then the interval remember that we saw an interval of 500 meters on sofa so now let's also impute that 500 meters for our x and then let's impute that um, 500 meters for our y now you will see something very interesting now the grid lines that we saw on sofa are actually falling on the same line as the one that qgis has generated for 500 meters interval so it's actually very interesting it's not something to be so fascinated about because they are actually the same values but when when i discovered it i was like okay i need to share it with you guys to see that okay basically you can move your data from so far maybe add your grid values to it you know add some map embellishment to it you know and then still move it up to QGIS and also maybe add some other map elements to it and you know get a fine map out of it now we said we are not going to use solid let's use cross and then the cross that we have there let's change the color down a bit so that it will not be too bold let's make it something like this good let's make it something like this right good then the next thing is for us to maybe add a notary somewhere maybe somewhere around here if we want to um, maybe move it somewhere there then maybe add a scale bar you know these are some map elements that you would want to add 
maybe add a scale bar somewhere around there if you would want to okay and then you can change the font now there is one important thing that is missing which is actually a frame let's um, add that frame and then when we add the frame let's um, remove the background that is being checked good so we can have something like this right good so we have a frame for our map so you are having a map and from here you can decide to make it more beautiful as though you all started everything from um, from jazz so basically this is what we want to share with you today you can see the maps are almost getting as beautiful as you would want you have all the grid values you can change you can come down to suffer and then maybe make some modifications and maybe still export them back or you can rightly do some of the modifications you want to do um right here on them um, on QGIS, right good so basically we've shown you how to it does not have any label so see it's actually null because these null values are those null values that we saw here on um, our contour um, attributes table right good these are the null values we saw on the contour attribute table so you can decide to maybe make some annotations you know modifications on the embellishment and then effect it on what your print layout so you can have something like this and then you know it's actually beautiful it's beautiful so we have been able to show you how to move from sofa to let's say gis and also how to move with some uh, map elements you know embellish your map to look a bit more aesthetically pleasing and then we've shown you some grid elements and you know some labels you know units and the rest of that so this is the much of what we have to share with you today Thanks for coming to class today. We hope we've provided a solution to this particular JS um, problem. We are going to see you on the next video. Ensure you keep staying safe and have a very good time. Bye.